I've received a lot of questions about lamps, how to make sure gel cures properly, and what type of lamp really matters. So today we're gonna deep dive into LED and CFL lamps. Hey guys, it's Liz from The Nail Hub, and I just did the most epic recording of lamps, and my file is corrupt. So we're redoing this, which is really fun, and this is just part of making videos. Um, I wanted to take a moment to kind of deep dive into nail lamps. I got a lot of questions following my base coat video, and if you guys haven't started from the beginning of my new nail fundamentals playlist, I really encourage you to go back and watch from the beginning. Uh, this is a new venture for me and I'm trying to make sure that I give you guys as much education as possible in a concise and easy to absorb format. Uh, but I did get a lot of questions about lamps, so I wanted to go over the differences in lamps and go over a couple of things that I think should be clarified before we get into more of the application. Because if you don't have curing down, it doesn't matter how awesome your application and your nail art is. If you know, nothing's cured, it's all gonna come off. And we definitely don't want that for ourselves or our clients. Okay, so I wanted to show you really quick a couple of pictures that I have. Um, so the first one is going to be a traditional lamp. So traditional lamps are, um, are probably the most common that you'll see, especially if you're just starting out or if you're looking for a cheap type of lamp. These are the, the very, very original ones. And this is a referred to as a UV lamp, but it's funny because this is a UV lamp, but there's other types of UV lamps. What this lamp really is, is a CFL UV lamp. CFL means compact fluorescent, okay? You might also see CCFL, which is cool cathode or cool compact, um, but what we're trying to talk about is the fact that it is a small fluorescent light and the fluorescent bulbs in here are what make this work. So let me show you really quick what I'm talking about. Okay, this is a fluorescent light bulb, okay? And these are the kind that you're gonna see in a nail lamp. This particular type of fluorescent light bulb emits a portion of the spectrum of UV light, okay? And this is what we need in order to cure gels, especially traditional gels. This is what you would have seen even five years ago. I mean, all the lamps had these and LED was very, very new. Now LED has completely taken over, but I want you guys to understand that this is a particular type of light bulb. It's CFL is the type of light bulb. And there's another type of light bulb, um, which we're gonna talk about in a second. You might also see your lamp has this inside of it. This is also a compact fluorescent bulb or lamp, um, but it is in a spiral formation instead of in a tube formation. So same thing. And you might be wondering like, well, Liz, aren't there fluorescent lights in lots of things? Yeah, actually there are. Um, fluorescent, compact fluorescent, you'll see in those energy efficient light bulbs you have in your house. You'll see fluorescent tube bulbs in your laundry room most likely is usually where they are or in grocery stores. Those are those long tubes that they put up in the ceiling for the lights. Not all of them emit ultraviolet light though. So it's a specific type of bulb that emits ultraviolet light that will cure our gels. However, in general, um, you know, these types of, of bulbs have been used in traditional style nail lamps. Okay. So this is one type of bulb. This is the other, um, you know, but I wanted to at least show you guys the differences between uh, UV CFL lamps. And now we're gonna talk about LED lamps. Okay, so this is an LED lamp and I'm gonna show you guys really quick on my overhead camera, all right? So you can see that this has a different type of light bulb inside. I've got another version here that I can show you, okay? Both are LED lamps. And both are UV lamps, which is funny because a lot of people say, oh, this is an LED lamp and the other kind is a UV lamp. They're actually both UV lamps. The only difference is these use a different bulb. So we're not using compact fluorescent in these lamps. We're using light emitting diodes. And we talked about that in my gel base coat video. LED stands for light emitting diode. And it's basically a very, very teeny tiny type of 
light emitter and I'll show you what one looks like. Just one second. Okay, so this, the LED is actually inside of this. So way down in there is a little teeny, teeny, tiny light emitting diode. And then it has this plastic, sometimes glass, but most of the time plastic little dome over the top of it. So you can see they're kind of like rounded, like right here. So it's like, they're not flat. It's got a little bit of a rounded shape to it. Maybe you can see it better from that angle. Um, so the light emitting diode is inside there and then the little plastic dome is over it to help uh, create that spread of light to reflect the light, to shine it, and, um, and also to protect the light emitting diode inside. There's also this one here that has a slightly different style of dome over the top same idea and if you can see that little tiny gray dot in there that is uh the led and then we've got this plastic dome with yellow plastic over the top okay so this is an led and then this is cfl and this is cfl and this is cfl okay but that lamp and this lamp are both uv lamps one is just led which is right here, LED and CFL, okay? But both are ultraviolet lamps and both cure gels, okay? Very, very important that you guys understand that. All right, so now that we all know the proper nomenclature for lamps, um, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what's important about lamps because I did have a lot of questions from people saying I'm having bad experiences with curing, I don't understand why my client's nails won't cure or like their thumb won't cure, something like that. So I wanted to kind of go over in general the important parts of a lamp. Now, I just talked about LED versus CFL. So what's the difference? Well, we've got two different types of bulbs that are emitting ultraviolet light. And in the category of LEDs, so light emitting diode lamps, we also have new technology that is hybrid. So if you see hybrid lamps, um, it refers to the spectrum of light that is being emitted by the light emitting diodes. And that's a, that's a mouthful. But basically, um, traditional UV gels are cured by a specific range of the, spe the spectrum of light. So I did touch on this in my gel base coat video, but I think this might be good homework for you guys. So I want you, after you watch this video, or you can put the video on pause right now, I want you to go Google the spectrum of light and I want you to look for the ultraviolet range that's between 365 nanometers and 405 nanometers, maybe even up to 425, okay? So that, that range on the spectrum of light, which a lot of people say near UV because it's not really UV, but it's all the way at the end of the visible spectrum of light that we can see with our naked eye, that is the spectrum that we use to cure light-sensitive gels like we put on our hands. Okay, so Google the spectrum of light and I want you guys to visualize what this is. And the nanometers is just basically the measurement used to measure the frequency of the light that's being emitted and it's the distance, if I remember off the top of my head from science without fact checking myself. Um, if I'm wrong, you guys can prove me wrong after you're done Googling. But the nanometer measurement is essentially the space between the peaks of the waves on the wavelength. And so it allows you to tell how uh, fast or slow that wavelength is, okay? So we want to understand the nanometer range on that visible spectrum of light that allows us to cure the gels that we use for nail services, okay? So going back to CFL and LED, even about maybe five or six years ago, traditional UV gels were cured by CFL bulbs in a UV lamp and it's only cured on a specific range of light. So on that lower end, the 365 to 385, somewhere around there, is where you're gonna, you're gonna find your traditional UV gels. And I hope I'm not mixing this up in my brain because it's one of those things, usually I'm right, but if I mess this up on my video, I'm gonna be really ticked. Anyway, I'll correct myself later if I'm wrong. Um, so that lower range is gonna be your traditional UV gels, okay? So those were the ones that needed like three to five minutes to cure. They're cured in a CFL style UV lamp. And I'll get into like how, you know, the curing differs, but that is one portion. So based on the formula of the gel, it may only cure if it's cured under a bulb that emits that range of light, okay? 
Then we fast forward to LED gels, um, which we have LED only sometimes, um, and it is only cured on the higher range, like where 405 nanometers is on that spectrum of light. So it doesn't matter whether that spectrum is being emitted by a CFL or an LED. I mean, most of the time it's emitted by an LED, but that's the type of light that we need to be able to cure our traditional gels and our LED gels, and it used to be separate, okay? Now what we have is we have the LED technology, which is really cool um, because we don't have to replace bulbs, all that stuff, which I'll go into the disadvantages of CFL in a second and also disadvantages of LED and compare. But we now have LED lamps, okay? So UV lamps that use these light emitting diodes that are able to emit the full spectrum of light needed to cure both traditional gels and the newer LED formulas, and so they can cure all the gels, which is awesome, okay? So there's basically three types of lamps. There's the traditional CFL lamps that you know have been popular for a really, really long time and are a tried and true technology. There are LED lamps that also emit ultraviolet light, but they only emit a certain spectrum of light that will only cure newer LED formula gels. And now we have a third lamp, which is the hybrid, which has the full range of light needed to cure any of the gels that we have. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? So there's two things that go into lamps. One is the type of bulb that's used to emit the light, and the second is the type of light that's being emitted. And both of those are really important to take into consideration when we're talking about lamps. But this is a UV lamp, and so is this. This is also a UV lamp. It's just a CFL UV lamp and an LED UV lamp, okay? So now that we're all using the proper terminology because it just makes me cringe every time we talk about UV versus LED, because they're all UV. It's just the type of bulb that we're using to get that UV light. And um, there also are differences in the portion of light on that spectrum that we are emitting through these bulbs in order to cure the different formulas of gel that exist on the market. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Okay. So let's talk advantages of LED now that we know kind of the different types of light and the different types of lamp, uh, lamps. All right, so LED never has to be replaced. The bulbs don't come out, they never lose their power, and the lamp eventually will wear out just over time. Moving it around inside of here is a lot of circuitry um, with all these little bulbs connected to it. You've got your power cord. So typically, you can expect a lamp to last somewhere between three and five years, depending on how hard you are on your nail lamps. I have personally had nail lamps for five years or more, but I know a lot of nail techs, they trash their lamps. It's like, it looks like it's been kicked down the stairs and thrown through a zombie apocalypse, and then their lamp finally survived. So the better you take care of your lamp, the longer it's going to last. That means don't slam it around, don't drop it, don't twist the cord a lot, don't keep plugging and unplugging it, just leave it alone. Leave it on your table, and if you need one for travel, maybe have a traveling lamp that you use separately. I know they're expensive, but it makes a huge difference by just leaving stuff alone. Also, keep your lamps away from things like acetone, all of that, because even though they are solvent resistant, a lot of time these surfaces are solvent resistant, acetone will eat it. It's, it's plastic on the outside, it's metal on the inside, it's got all kinds of circuitry on it. Um, and so we just wanna take care of our lamps so that they'll last as long as humanly possible. But LEDs do not need to be replaced. CFL bulbs do. After about six months of using a CFL bulb, they have to be changed out because they lose their ability to cure over time. So LEDs, don't have that problem, which is really nice. Um, LEDs, we need a lot of them because they are such a focused type of light. So we need a lot of them in the lamp. So placement is something really important to take into consideration is where are the LEDs? And I'll talk about that in a second when we talk about hand placement. But when you're looking for an LED lamp, it's really important to look at the placement of them inside. Make sure that there's LEDs on top, make sure that there's LEDs all the way around. And like I said, you may see lamps on the market that have this type of light bulb on the top and LEDs around, but I'd rather have a lamp that's just LEDs that I never have to worry about the bulb getting burnt out and it'll cure all of my gels at the same time, okay? Um, another advantage of LED is, and I'll, I'll use a, an analogy that I like to use a lot here, um, CFL bulbs 
if we think about fluorescent, it's kind of a glowy ambient type of light. So I like to use the analogy of a convection oven versus a microwave, okay? So convection oven, you know, it circulates the heat around our cake and it perfectly evenly cooks the cake because it's just circulating all this hot air around it and it cooks everything from the outside in nice and even, right? So that's why people love convection ovens. It's just this nice kind of ambient heat all the way around. CFOs are very similar. It kind of glows around the gel, nice glowiness, you know, like fairy light, and then it slowly cures the gel from the outside in. That's why it takes so much longer to cure the gel. I mean, in the past, it could take up to five minutes to cure traditional gels. Um, most gels are two minutes if you're using a traditional CFL lamp. But I mean, we're talking about longer cure times because it takes longer for that light to be able to penetrate, to get those photo initiators going and for the, the chemical process to start and finish, okay? So much slower process. Um, with LEDs, it's like a microwave. It's like little laser beams shooting all over the place, like an 80s you know, laser beam party, I swear. Um, they're not lasers, it's just light being emitted out of a very, very teeny light, but it is a very focused type of light, so it really just zaps down into the gel, cures everything from the bottom up, cures faster, cures better. And so even though there are those LED and traditional gels, um, the reason why hybrids are so awesome is because not only can they cure all the gels, but they cure them even better than traditional CFL bulbs used to because of that focus, like that focus very, very high penetrating uh, type of light that's going into the gel itself. So if you were to pick up a hybrid lamp and cure one of your traditional old gels, like I have some that are maybe six or seven years old that I still have. If I were to cure that gel with my hybrid lamp and then cure it versus a CFL lamp, I'm gonna get, get much more full cure on that gel in my LED lamp. And it's just because of the style of the bulb and the way that it shoots that light into the gel, okay? And that's why the reflection is so important. That's why the placement of the LEDs is so important because it's not that glowy type of light. It's very, very focused. So if, uh, if you're like one of the people that commented on my gel base coat video, she was saying that she was having issues switching to LED lamps because her clients weren't getting this side of their thumb cured. And so if you think about it from the type of light that's being emitted and how it's being emitted, a more glowy type of light is gonna be more forgiving, but it's gonna be slower, right? A more focused type of light, you're gonna to need to make sure that the finger is perfectly placed and that there's lots of LEDs, especially even way down on the sides where the thumb sits, in order to make sure that gel is gonna cure because it doesn't glow as much as CFLs do. It's very, very focused. So you have to make sure that those fingers are lined up with those rays of light and that they're gonna get cured even on the sides of the thumbs, okay? So that's one of the biggest differences. So if your LED lamp does not have lights all the way down the sides and on the top and everywhere, you're gonna run into curing problems, all right? There's also different types of LEDs. Some are more high quality than others. You might have seen lamps where the whole ceiling of the lamp is just covered in these little kind of bubble looking LEDs and then there's very, very few on the sides. Those lamps are not very high quality. They don't cure very well and those bubble type of LEDs are not very good. They actually wear out really, really quickly. Um, so I know lamps are very expensive. I have invested many a dollar in lamps, but it does make a huge difference. And if you're gonna invest in anything as a gel nail tech, your lamp is really important and your e-file is also really important. Those two things, I would not, I would literally spare no expense with a lamp and an e-file. Um, and if you buy from a rep reputable manufacturer, to be honest, I think that it's nice because you get a warranty from them, you get kind of peace of mind from them, um, and they are gonna last longer. They're not gonna last forever, but they will last longer than something that you buy off of you know, some other website, okay? Um, and I started that way too. My first lamp, I was like, oh my God, lamps are so expensive. And I think I bought, I think my first lamp was like $30 off of eBay or something like that. And I was like, eh, it's an LED lamp, it'll cure. And then after I started using higher quality gels, it would not cure my gels. And it's mainly just because the bulbs themselves weren't strong enough, it wasn't emitting the correct, um, the correct wavelength of light. And as we get more and more pigmented with our gel colors and all of that, we need very focused, very powerful light in order to cure all of that stuff. And there's sacrifices to everything. 
but I would rather have a hybrid lamp with LEDs that is really high quality that's gonna cure all of my stuff and invest in this than have to worry every single time I use a different gel whether or not it's gonna cure, whether or not I'm gonna have issues, okay? So that's Liz's two cents on that subject. All right, so first and foremost is understanding how the lamps work, what the heck is going on between CFL, LED, the different types of light that are being emitted. Don't forget to Google the spectrum of light and take a look at it. Um, but also there's placement, right? I mean, whether we're using CFL or LED lamps, the hand placement is extremely important. And this is something I always take a second to train my clients on, okay? So this is part two to Liz's how to be successful with lamps um, as you know a gel nail tech. All right, so here's my lamp it's sitting on my table like so. And here's the little opening there, okay? And you can see there's LEDs right here on the side for, for my, my thumb as I put it in. All right, so let's pretend that I'm gonna teach my client how to cure their nails because clients play a key role in curing. Clients really have no clue how anything works. They think it's like a magic box, they stick their hand in, they pull it out, and they're like, ding, my nails are done, this is amazing. No, they have to understand that this plays one of the most pivotal roles in making sure that their nails are durable, shiny, and perfect. So they need to understand the importance of using a lamp the proper way and how to place their hand, okay? So there's two things that come up when we're talking about very high power, very high quality lamps, and also just the, the different formulas in gel. I mean, nowadays what we're trying to do is instead of waiting five minutes for gel to cure, we want the gel to cure in like 30 seconds or less. I mean, now I think some gels are down to 10 seconds and it's cured. So with that comes heat. The more powerful, the faster the, the chemical reaction, Heat is just something that gets released during the chemical reaction, but the faster that happens, the more there's gonna be that kind of zing. So if you've ever felt that heat sensation on your nails, it's just the exothermic reaction, which means heat is being released as part of the chemical reaction, and we want to eliminate that as much as possible for the comfort of ourselves and the comfort of our clients. Okay, so how do we do that? All right, here's my lamp. I teach my client how to cure their nails. Client, you're gonna put your hand all the way into the lamp, just nice and slow and, and carefully, and you're gonna pull your hand immediately out and turn it upside down. And then you're gonna go back, in, out, turn it upside down. In, out, turn it upside down. Literally at that speed. No jabbing, no crazy movements, just all the way in, all the way out, and turn your hand upside down, okay? now. If you are an efficient strategized nail technician, you are going to have two lamps on your table so that your client can do this while you are doing the other hand, okay? This is how I'm able to do a full set of nails in an hour or less, okay? So they put their hand in, pull it out, upside down. Well, you're probably at this point wondering, why the heck are you having your client turn their hand upside down? There are two very smart reasons for that. One is, it makes sure that they actually take their hand all the way out of the lamp because they can't do this very easily when the base plate is on. So rather than them having a jab, because I know I've had so many clients, I'm like, take your hand out, flash here, blah, blah, blah. This is what the client does, <laughs> like this. And I'm like, no, slow down, it's okay. You need to take a full break from the light, otherwise the chemical reaction isn't going to slow down and you're gonna feel heat. So by having them turn their hand all the way upside down, it makes sure that they actually have to take their hand all the way out of the lamp. This is very, very important, okay. Number two reason is when they take their hand out, a lot of clients immediately relax their hand to the right side or to the left side, or they do something really weird with their fingers. Clients come up with stuff on the fly. It's funny, it's like, I never knew about any of this stuff until I started doing clients and I was like, where do they come up with this stuff? Or they like immediately like, touch their nose and you're like, no, don't touch anything. Like just keep curing your nails, right? So instead of them having their hand go in and jabbing and whatever, and also I don't want them to just turn their hand relaxed to the side for whatever crazy reason they come up with, by having them turn their hand upside down, it keeps the gel weighted to the center of the nail. And that way I don't get gel slopped all the way to the right or to the left or running into the pinky or whatever keeps the gel perfectly centered. And when we talked about you know 
mohawk of gel I've, on a, a lot of my tutorials i've done mohawk of gel center down the finger you know apex placement it keeps that apex placement keeps all the gel where i want it because if they're turning their hand upside down gravity is going to keep that gel centered in the middle of their nail okay so i'm eliminating heat and discomfort for my client and i'm also ensuring that i'm eliminating a lot of finish filing and problems by having them do their curing this way okay so let's review in out upside down in out upside down and they're going to do that the whole 30 seconds that you have on your timer or whatever timer that you're using they're going to keep doing that until the timer goes off and while they're doing that you are going to be working on the other hand because you want to be applying the gel and make sure that you're always doing something as part of your process that'll speed up your appointments a lot if you're always working on nails you will definitely speed up the process keep your head down you know, talk through your eyelashes and always make sure that your client is playing an important role in the curing and everything, okay? So by teaching your clients that in the very beginning of their appointment without any gel on, just explaining how this all works, they're going to understand the role that they play. They're gonna think you're a very smart nail tech, which you are because you're watching all of these amazing videos that I'm making for you, duh. And you're gonna be so much more efficient and your services are gonna turn out way better, okay? So that's part of it, right? So we're eliminating heat, we're making sure that the gel is staying centered, we're explaining to our clients their role in making sure their nails cure properly. What about thumbs? All right, this is probably one of the biggest. Clients also don't necessarily know how to put their hand in the lamp, okay? There's a couple things. Most lamps come with a base plate that has some type of little like ridge or finger notches or something. They all differ. It just depends on how your lamp is. So this one has a finger notch for the thumbs and then it has like a little ridge here so that people can feel like where is the back of the lamp without actually jabbing into the back. All right. So what I like to explain to my clients as well as putting their hand in the lamp is where they put their hand and how they put their hand on the base plate. I don't want my client to do this. I don't want my client to do this. I don't want my client to do this. I just want them to relax their hand softly on the base plate with their fingers slightly separated, okay? So have them gently separate their fingers, nice and relaxed hand position and relaxed on the base plate. None of this crazy up, down, scrunchy monster, nothing, all right? Thumbs are a little bit trickier. It depends on the person. As someone who has worked on older clients a lot, I will tell you that older women typically have a hard time making sure that their thumb stays in an upward direction. Due to arthritis, whatever, usually their thumbs are all the way to the side like this, okay? So what I like to tell people is if you're gonna flex any finger, flex your thumb so that your thumb sticks upward and that way you're absolutely gonna get light on this side of your thumb, if they're not able to do that or it causes them discomfort or you just find that it's too difficult, just have people do thumbs separately. And actually doing thumbs separately is really nice because you're able to make sure that that gel stays perfectly centered because the, the, the thumb is flat rather than to the side. And thumbs are so awkward, it's just, it's that much easier to just have them put their hand like this. So this was my lamp. I keep my lamp on the edge of my table so it's easier for people to get their thumbs on there and I just have them do both of their thumbs like this, okay? So hands all the way inside so that like the joint of their hand is all the way up against the edge of the lamp and I put it on the edge of my table so that they can just do both thumbs. If you have two lamps, it's much easier because you can have one here, which is a very, very nice hand position. So it'd be like one here and one here and cure the thumbs, okay? And I do that almost all the time because it's just an insurance policy for me. It makes sure that the thumbs always cure make sure my client is comfortable, make sure that they have plenty of space to get their thumb in there, especially if they have a form on. If you've got all five forms on and you're trying to put your hand in here, it's like, oh my gosh, how the heck do they get all those forms and fingers and stuff in there without scraping everything on the outside? So having them practice without product on will really eliminate the issue of them scraping their nails as they go into the lamp, okay? And once they understand that there's, you know, they want to line up their fingers with the lights, and that the light needs to touch everywhere that there is gel in order to cure it, usually clients catch on. They're like, oh, it's not a magic box. It needs to actually cure or bake or whatever you wanna use as your terminology. It needs to actually get light on that gel in order for the gel to properly cure, okay? 
And again, the better the formula of the gel, the more photo initiators it has in it and, and the, the, the difference in the quality of the formula. A lot of gels, it's like they're very forgiving. Some gels aren't. It just depends on the formula. And especially when you're talking about very, very highly pigmented blacks, whites, reds, neons, you really want to make sure that you are using a high quality lamp with that focus type of light and the hand placement becomes even more important because that pigment inside the gel is going to be fighting against the light. It's going to be blocking the light a lot of the time. And so we want to make sure that we're able to cure everything all the way down to the bottom layers that we've applied on the nail. With clear gels, you're not going to find that to be so much of an issue because clear, the light's able to shine right through it. Um, builder pinks, uh, very, very opaque whites and blacks are going to be the hardest. And those are the ones I always test. When I'm going to buy a new gel brand, I always buy a titanium oxide white, which is the biggest, biggest particle of white. It's like chalk white. I also buy a black and I usually buy a neon yellow or a neon green to test the curing to see how it works because the formula of the gel also plays a huge role in how successfully it cures. You can have the best lamp on the market and you can have crap gel and the gel will give you problems. It'll only cure on the top, it'll wrinkle, it'll bubble, it'll peel, it'll do all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, one other little tidbit I wanted to give you guys just as a little helping, helping hand. Um, as you will notice, and actually I'll show you guys this on my overhead. Lamps get dirty, it's just how it works. So this lamp, this is gross. Oh my God, this is really gross. This is Liz. This is just Liz on here. Oh, isn't that lovely? Look how oily my hands are. I'm addicted to lotion and cuticle oil, so you can definitely see how much lotion and cuticle oil I use. There's also gel on here, and this is just grody, right? I mean, if I was a client and I was gonna put my hand in this lamp, I'd be like, oh, no, I don't wanna do it. So keeping your base plates clean, obviously you can wipe these down with alcohol, Windex, whatever, but a really, really time-saving, awesome idea is use some tin foil or saran wrap. Just wrap the whole base plate in tin foil and saran wrap, and then you can just toss that every so often and you'll keep your base plate clean. Another thing that I get asked a lot, which I never thought about until I started distributing lamps, is people get their lamp like this from the manufacturer. So it's silver on the back, and then when they turn it over, they're like, wait, it's white, why is it white? And then this starts peeling, right? And they're like, oh my God, the paint's peeling. No, it's not paint. This is actually protective plastic for your base plate. So usually your base plate will have this type of white plastic on it. I leave this on just for me because I just don't want to mess with it right now. And I use this particularly for swatching. Um, but you can see how much gel gets on here just from you touching the inside. You do want to make sure that you have that reflective surface though, because if we talk about LED, Remember, LED is very focused, and so having everything reflect on the inside of the lamp is gonna allow us to cure better, okay? So this goes on the bottom, and usually they're magnets, and they just line up like so, and you'll hear it kind of click into place, okay? So there you have it. So you can see that there's not much distance between the base plate and the, the roof, and that's why it's good for clients to practice curing their nails, because they need to get a good idea of how much space they have, so that they're not constantly scraping their nails on the top of your lamp, okay? And most lamps also have some kind of timer system on here. Um, it just depends on your particular model. Um, you, they usually have some kind of like digital timer display with different buttons, a power switch on the back. Um, a lot of them are starting to have little uh, hand like uh, cushions so that you, like the person can rest their hand on it while you're working on their hand. And the removable base plates are really nice. Um, but you'll never have to replace the LEDs inside, like I mentioned with CFL. And I do like the hybrid technology because it'll cure all of my gels. So you'll see here, even the manufacturers are saying LED and UV, which is funny, but they're mainly doing it because that's how people refer to the lamps nowadays. And it should really be, you know, full spectrum or whatever, but you can see how much just the way people refer to things affects even the way the manufacturers respond to it as well. Um, makes a huge difference. Okay, so we talked about the types of bulbs in nail lamps. We talked about nail lamps themselves. We talked about the spectrum of light, which is really important. Um, we talked about some of the advantages and disadvantages of LEDs and CFLs. Mainly CFL, more glowy, slower, 
cures from the outside in is a good way to remember it and the bulbs have to be replaced and they wear out over time and even while the the lights are on fluorescent actually has kind of a warm-up factor which means the bulbs don't cure at the same level throughout the whole time that they're on it actually takes them a while to kind of warm up um, and so that's why there's a lot of kind of issues with the cfl curing even though it's a more standardized technology um, with LEDs, more focused light, which means we have to really take into consideration hand placement. However, it cures deeper, it cures better. Um, we got heat, a lot more heat with LED just because it is so much more focused and it's a quicker curing process, which kind of exacerbates all of the, the heat issues we might have had with previous formulas. Um, but in general, I would say light emitting diodes are the way to go for lamps. And if you can get a hybrid lamp, even better, because those light emitting diodes are going to emit all the light on that spectrum that you need to cure any type of gel that you might have in your arsenal. Okay. As we move forward with application, we're definitely going to talk about curing more. We're going to talk about how to fix some of the issues that come up when curing doesn't go right, because that is really important. But today I just wanted to go over you know, curing in and of itself, lamps in and of themselves, so you guys get a better idea of how lamps work, the proper terminology for the different styles of lamps, and also some of the things that you can do with your clients to train them on lamps so that you really make sure that your services turn out perfectly every single time. But of course, things are gonna go wrong, and so we're gonna definitely cover more on troubleshooting as we move forward with these tutorials. I hope you guys have enjoyed everything I've been doing with this new Nail Fundamentals playlist. If you do, please subscribe and hit that little bell down below so that you'll get notified next time I upload a video. And I've been doing these every single Monday. I've been getting awesome feedback from all of you. I've been getting great questions. So stay tuned for more awesome sauce nail videos to come. And I hope this stuff helps you guys a lot with the curing process and your knowledge of how this works with your gel products, okay? Thanks so much for tuning in guys. And also if you are looking for these lamps that I've shown on my video today, you can get them at thenailhub.com. But now with this newfound knowledge, you guys are gonna be able to shop for nail lamps intelligently, understand exactly what to look for as far as LED placement, what type of spectrum of light it emits, um, the different types of bulbs, the different options that are out there. I think you guys are gonna be much smarter cookies when it comes to nail lamps going forward, all right? Thanks so much, guys. Bye.